You're listening to the Dibbly Dobbly Podcast. Remember to like, share, comment, subscribe, and click the bell to make sure you get the latest episodes of the podcast. Be sure to like and share our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter and on Instagram. Hi, my name is Mark Garrett. I'm from uh, Gibraltar Cricket, and you're watching the Dibbly Dobbly Podcast. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Dibbly Dobbly Podcast. And on the podcast, we have started a new series on the podcast looking at associate nations within cricket and how they are developing the game in their country. And many of us cricket fans know so much about the established cricketing countries and not enough on the associate nations who play cricket. So it would be nice to learn more about these associate countries and via the podcast, people can learn more as well. For today's Associate Cricket Series episode, we are discussing all things Gibraltar cricket. And joining me to discuss and talk all things Gibraltar cricket is the president of the Gibraltar Cricket Association, Mark Garrett. Mark, welcome. Thank you. It's great to have you here and to have a great chat about Gibraltar cricket, which many people won't familiarise the sport with uh, cricket in Gibraltar, the set the other sports that they would associate it with, but not so much cricket if some people are coming into the game for the first time, but cricket and Gibraltar have a long-standing relationship with each other over the years, and as we'll talk about in our chat, uh, you will explain that and, and people will learn more about it. So we're really looking forward to, to this chat with you today, Mark, and I, and I think people will learn a lot from listening to you about the work you're doing uh, for cricket in Gibraltar and how the game's developing and growing um, as it is amongst all associate nations around the world. And that's what we do this series on the podcast is to just educate people really on these countries that play cricket in the, in the associate world and, and what they're doing to, to make the game a better place and pretty much have fun and, and enjoy the game of cricket and be part of the cricketing family. So that's, that's all that matters. So, um, but before we do that, Mark, um, as I do with all my guests that I've interviewed on the podcast, I'd like to take them back to when they first got into cricket. And it's been very fascinating listening to people's memories on how they got started into cricket so mark let's go back to the very beginning growing up i know that's a long time ago now <laughs> um what were your earliest memories of watching playing and even going to the cricket and who were some of your cricketing idols that you looked up to when you were growing up well for me my first memories of, of cricket were playing um in my middle school in in the uk i, I wasn't born, necessarily born in Gibraltar, but um i Play, playing middle school in cricket in Newcastle with the the blue cr cricket sets, um, you know, uh, for, for, part of, for part of my middle school team and and part of playing in amongst your classmates and whatnot was was my first memories of playing cricket. Um, certainly, when I, I moved to Gibraltar in in 1996 um, with my with my parents at the time, and you know, for, for it's then when I really really became more into the game possibly a lot through my my dad as well through his passion of, of cricket and being able to watch the cricket on tv and 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 also playing here locally so i know uh, we have we had like a a, a mini a league here where you know participation was certainly encouraged and that's i for playing from middle school is based playing in school here as well in gibraltar as well and then joining that the, the cricket team and playing as a junior in amongst that team. Yeah, yeah, no, that's fantastic. Fantastic to to hear that and your introduction into the game and how you got involved in, in that. Um, any cricketing idols that you looked up to when you're watching cricket on the TV or anyone that's stuck in your mind? I mean, I always, I'm, a, a, I'm an England, apart from a Gibraltar cricket fan, obviously, but, you know, an England cricket fan as well. So I do like to, to see England do well uh, when they do do well. But so now I used to like watching, you know, Marcus Truscothic, um when he was when he was batting well, um, you know, and I used to like watching you know, Darren Goff, Andy Caddick as, as, the, as a bowling unit um, and how the times they were quite inspirational in the way they bowled, um, you know, the, and, but the times where they were being carted around the pitch is the standard England fashion, really. <laughs> yes, certainly against Australia during the 90s and the Ashes. Unfortunately, the yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> but 
But uh, yeah, no, nah, they, they were very fine players in their own right um, and did well for England over the years. Um, any particular playing memory stands out of you playing cricket that you remember when you were a kid that stands out that you look back on? Uh, when I was probably 15, 14, 15, I, I was fortunate to represent Gibraltar in an under-15 European tournament, which was based here in Gibraltar. Um, and I'm not the most attacking of, of batters. I was more, you know, more there for my bowling skills. Um, but I, I'm being awarded a man of the match for my batting performance. Um, you know, and, and that tour, it was against four teams, Germany. Um, there was a, there was a rocket, there was a second Gibraltar rock 11 team. It was against Germany, Greece and Austria. I think we only just lost to Austria and I batted number 10, but it was the, the old simple thing of the, the game wasn't T20, it was more of a 40 over game. Mm. And, you know, we had, I bat, started batted at number 10 and, you know, it was block the good ball and try and score runs off the, the bad balls. And then the next game, because of that batting kind of mentality I took forward, it was, uh, I went up to number five and got a man of the match for scoring uh, 25 not out after we found ourselves like 30 for nine and we were chasing uh, 80, 80, 90 something. So my quite, quite happy to receive that award. And, and so much so I got promoted up to the order to number one for the next game and, and got a 40 ball duck. So I got <laughs> swiftly put back down to the middle order Yeah. Uh, f for that. So, but that's my, obviously playing internationally was, was proud to play for Gibraltar. And, and represent what is my country, my home. Yeah, definitely. You should be proud of that. Definitely, It's always a proud moment when you represent a country, you pop on the cap or you see the, the flag or the logo on your chest uh, walking out and just, you know, that, that feeling. That you can't describe that feeling to anyone who hasn't played international cricket it's, it's, or international sport. It's a, it's a feeling that you can't really replicate somewhere else, can you? It's, it's just one of a kind, isn't it? It's, it's a, it, it is. It's just the, the passion, the pride, you know, the, the wanting to do well. And, mm. and it doesn't just affect you as an individual, I think, as well. It's the team, the team spirit behind it, but also the community spirit. And, that, and that's one thing I think Gibraltar is very well known for. It's its, it's community spirit. And, and that's certainly something that I try and want to, you know, want to progress and encourage. Yeah, definitely, absolutely, and that's what cricket's all about, isn't it? The camaraderie, ship, the mateship, and being together and playing as a team and just having fun, really. Um, and yeah. those are the main things that we should remember in the game of cricket. You know, it's it's a game at the end of the day, and it's meant to be enjoyed. You know, of course, you've got to take it seriously sometimes when you're playing at high levels or international cricket, but you just got to remember, have fun, as you did as a kid when you were playing the game and you're playing with your mates, and that's the main reason why we all love the game and, and play the game so yeah i couldn't agree more with what you said there um in terms of your involvement with gibraltar cricket in terms of becoming the president as you are now in your current post tell us about how did you get involved in the behind the scenes setup of gibraltar cricket um that is is uh, there's a, a little bit of of um controversy in, in in that in the sense that i at the time there was a there was a, a, a couple of there was a dismiss a, a, a member of our board a member of our, our, our team had left um and basically i met with the then acting the the acting president who's uh you know who's not who's no longer the president um I met with him and we had a, a long chat and and we actually worked quite well well as a team and we were always able to you know to 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 work towards and have the shared goal of making uh Gibraltar cricket a better going forward and involved I kind of said it kind of you know we sat down and discussed ideas discussed ways forward and as a result of that kind of vacancy on the board i got you know i got asked if i wouldn't mind you know stepping in as 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 vice president um to you know promote 
what that shared values and, and, and make Gibraltar cricket stronger. So as that happened, um, you know, we kind of started cricket on the rock again. Uh, when I say that, that's, that's because we've uh, previously, uh, we have an, a stadium now at Europa Sports Park, which is a great facility. It's very modern, um, built in 2018, 2019, um, you know, but for, for the first, when I first started playing cricket in Gibraltar, we had a Europa, a Europa field, which was played on gravel, apart from your mat wicket in, in the middle. And it was a, a military, you know, pitch at the time, which they weren't really using. And we used to use more of it for cricket. But um, we had the Island Games here in Gibraltar in 2019, and the government invested a significant amount of money in upgrading stadiums, building new stadiums. And, um, you know, that, that the current sport, the Europa Sports Park we have now is, 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 is why that is what we have. And, and it, we had a bit of a, a slow few years with not being able to play cricket here in Gibraltar because we only have the one ground. We're quite limited for space. Um, you know, if, if geographically, Gibraltar's on the southern tip of peninsula of Spain. It's a small uh, British uh, outpost, shall we say. Um, you know, it has, Gibraltar has its own constitution, its own chief minister, its own parliament. Um, but we're only uh, a population of 30,000, 32,000, I think. And we have very, very limited space. It takes about 20 minutes to, by car to go around the entire Gibraltar. So, you know, we, we don't have that much space and we had to stop playing cricket here locally for a few years or, and we would try and play a little bit in Spain. Um, but the nearest cricket pitch there is about an hour and a half drive one way and an hour and a half back. So that will put off a lot of people um, getting to, to to play. So we need, certainly for us, what we looking at is, is looking forward to having our own ground back and being able to play cricket here locally. Yeah, absolutely. I can, I can imagine that. Yeah, the constraints and the challenges, and uh, being a small island, essentially Gibraltar, which, as you said, is off the coast of Spain, uh, does have its challenges. But you seem to, you know, meet them head on and try and navigate them as the as the best way you possibly can. So that's that's very uh, encouraging to hear that, and and hopefully things can get a bit easier as as um, you look at many different ways to try and, you know, incorporate uh, cricket games in Gibraltar and get grounds and facilities up, which we'll talk about a bit later on in this chat when we talk about growth and development of, of the game over there in Gibraltar. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it was, it was very interesting listening to your cricket journey, Mark, how you got involved in the game, your memories of the game, how you got involved in Gibraltar cricket, um, so, so thank you for sharing that with us. It, it's, uh, it's always, it always amazes me whenever I ask that question to people, because I always say different things and different uh, perspectives on the game and in different ways. And I think that just sums up cricket, really. It's a, it's a sport that's uh, got that individuality side to it. Everyone's different and, and their path into cricket's different. So, so thank you for sharing that with us, Mark. Really appreciate that. Um, Mark, I thought to start this interview off um about gibraltar cricket let's talk about the history of cricket in gibraltar and uh, you can learn a lot about cricket from its history and the history of cricket in gibraltar is quite interesting from the research and the reading i've done um and you will tell us a little bit more about that in just a moment mark so so mark can you give us a, a brief overview on the history of cricket in gibraltar how did it all start and became really a a, a thing in gibraltar really so obviously Back in the very early years, probably about the late 18th century, um, uh, Gibraltar was more known as a military garrison um, for the British Empire. And obviously, with the, the, the Navy ships and, and, you know, the military personnel that came over, uh, Gibraltar, uh, sorry, cricket came over, um, you know, with it as part of that, you know, uh, a way to the culture, shall we say, coming across. And so in, in basically it was more civilians as well as servicemen that started playing cricket here locally. Um, and 
and and from there it just it's just kind of developed since since then so you know in 18 uh, for example in 1822 we had your your mod and um locals playing cricket and and slowly as uh, as the years have gone by we've have had you know the military garrison shrink and the civilian population grow so over time uh, the, the, the it's become more of a civilian sport rather than just for the for the military garrison but you know during during the certainly during like uh, the early 1900s you know we've we've had visiting clubs with uh, Gibraltar Cricket Association was actually formed in 1950s and um, sorry in 1960 was the, the Gibraltar Cricket Association was formed and we've been playing really cricket kind of in that fixed thing since then we were actually uh, elected onto the ICC associate membership in 1969 which is, is a big thing for us and it's important for any cricketing nation really because of the 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 this you know the, the pride of having that association with the cricket council council is so in in kind of like nine in our as we progress through the years i mean we have had different clubs and different teams visiting um i, I mean if you search through history in in 19 kind of in the 1930s uh sorry in the 1890s, should I say, uh, there's actually an Australian national cricket team has arrived in Gibraltar um, after the ship that it was on collided with uh, another one, I imagine, in the bay. And, you know, Gibraltar has, or a group of civilians at the time, played against that Australian team. Now, the score was very unflattering for the Gibraltar side, at least anyway, with Australia apparently scoring about 150 and the local side dismissed for being just 25. For just 25. So, you know, we, we have those things, but also Essex County Cricket Club has visited on the rock and played a rock 11 um, and other clubs have come across over the years as well and, and maybe used it as a training base um, in, in history. Um, from a national perspective, certainly Gibraltar always, you know, tries to get away and, and does the best we can with what the limited kind of resources and, and population that we have. Um, in certainly in 1982, we took part in what was the then the ICC trophy, um, and we've continued to to kind of like improve and progress there. Some tournaments have been better than others. Um, you know, we've we certainly have travelled as well. We've gone to Canada, is uh, to Israel. So looking at and playing those type of events have certainly grown not only the the wanting to, to do better, but the, the base in playing cricket as well, because they're able to see, uh, your, your local community is able to see other athletes do well and, and maybe spark that interest in what is cricket about, what is, you know, it's not just standing at a fine leg for 50 overs and watching the ball fly past you. Or you know, you know, get involved. There is an element of athleticism and, and technique and, and, and whatnot. Uh, you know, we've hosted tournaments here, here in Gibraltar. Uh, just you know, a majority of junior ones, but we've also hosted a quadrangular tournament involving France, Israel, and Italy. Um, and when we, when the ICC split the. European Championship into two divisions in like the 2000s, the early 2000s, Gibraltar was placed in Division 2 and we've actually won that that division, which is another proud moment uh, for us and, and that allowed us to to travel to Canada in 2001 to take part in the ICC Trophy. Again, a huge moment for not only the Gibraltar cricket, but Gibraltar as a whole. Um, you know, we played, we played Germany, Namibia and, and Nepal, who are now serious cricketing nations and um, we did progress past the first round but again we go there and, and, and take him part and, and put in Gibraltar's name on the map so we now currently at least we are in we're about 70 something in the world so 72 in, in the world rankings um, 
and I think we currently sit in in division like six or seven of the in like the ICC groupings. So for us, it's important to try and progress up those and, and move forward as we go as we go along. Yeah, definitely, absolutely. Um, it's all about that progression and development uh, going forward, as, as you said. But uh, yeah, no, just listening to you there, and I think many of our listeners as well will, you know, learn more about cricket in Gibraltar and, and obviously you just telling us the history of it, uh, which was very fascinating. And, and obviously with many cricket countries around the world, all of them are basically Commonwealth nations really, and the British came years ago and settled and um, and brought cricket to those countries. It's no different to Gibraltar as well, being a British territory, um, brought the game there. And, and, you know, all countries in the associate world have that sort of connection to to the game in that way with the British, of course. But it was just fascinating listening to that. And it's, it was quite an interesting timeline of events of things that happened over there, as you just mentioned there, Mark. And, and, and no doubt people will do some more research. I didn't know about the Australian team in 1930, I got to do some more research on that. Uh, that, that so was in 1890, 1890. Oh, 1890. Not that. 1890. Sorry, I got my dates mixed up. I did try and correct myself there. <laughs> well, that's all good. Well, well, we're definitely going to do some research on that. I, I didn't know that before. So you learn something new in the in the game of cricket every day, do you? <laughs> so that's just wonderful. And that's what's the beauty of cricket is learning something new every day. So no doubt our listeners will learn something new just listening about the history of cricket in Gibraltar and how it got established and the connection it has with its people and and the region itself and also uh, other cricketing teams going there for games as well, uh, playing over the years. Uh, it's just fascinating. So, so thank you for that, Mark, sharing that uh, with us, that brief history lesson on the history of cricket in Gibraltar. Um, so, Mark, uh, let, let's talk about the Gibraltar national cricket teams, the women's and men's teams, and it'd be good to gain your insights on the two teams and learn more about their achievements, the players' stories, because many of the players come from diverse backgrounds themselves, uh, and it'll be good to gain your insights on, on the two teams. Um, also, the women's team, they were about to embark on their international journey this year uh, because they haven't played an official women's T20 national as yet. They've played some T20 internationals before, but they weren't given a status uh, back then, obviously, until the ICC have changed everything now to give T20 status to everyone now. So they will embark on that journey um, later this year. And uh, obviously the men have been playing T20s for a while now since that status was given. And obviously before they were playing loads of internationals before uh, everything got changed around, as I mentioned, with the ICC. Um, so, so for uh, Mark, uh, for those who may not know a lot about the Gibraltar women's and, and men's teams, can you tell us more about them and uh, the players and some of their stories? Um, so, from the from the, the first of all, the, the, the women's perspective, um, you know, one of our years ago prior to obviously the, the change in the icc format where they gave that status to everyone uh, a lot of our should we say younger ladies at the time because we're talking school age and stuff and, and that's where it was the focus was uh for us at the time and, and the progression that has followed some of them you know through and you can still you know see some of it today certainly you know um the likes of lizzie ferrari amy Valverde, uh, Noel Laguerre, Lauren Pius, there's a lot of those, those particular players you remember, you know, playing, you know, representing Gibraltar in school and, and they still continue to represent and want to represent Gibraltar today. Um, they, you know, bring that experience through, but they also bring the, the story of development and, and being part of that growth. So, and, and I suppose a lot of the younger ladies will see that and think to you know, that's something that I, your school, school ladies, school goers today can see that and say, you know what, there is a future and the development for me. Again, we had a bit of a, a hiatus when the pitch was being, was, was, was being redone at Europa. Um, unfortunately, it's just one of those things and we had to, to, to deal with this, but it was certainly important 
for us as, as an association, as a board, to, to bring women's cricket back. And last last year was, was the first time we played a T10 as part of the European Cricket Network against, you know, the Netherlands, um, against Italy and against Sweden. Um, you know, and, and not only had we brought in had had we had the old the old they're not old don't get me wrong those ladies are not old they're still in their late twenties early thirties I don't want to get I don't want to offend any of them but you know the young also the younger generation as well that we come through so uh, Yanira uh, Sebastian Blag uh, you know made her debut in that game along with a few of the other players as well and and it was good to see them getting involved and getting wickets now you're playing against the Netherlands. And the Netherlands, the, the women's team, you know, for the associate members kind of really set the standards. So it shows where the target is and, and certainly where we want to, to grow towards. And I've had confidence that together with the development of the um, the younger the younger women, but also with the help of the, the, the old school, the original, uh, you know, teams back in the days that we can start moving towards you know, getting better, playing more games, and and you know, increasing our the, the dream for those girls to play at Gibraltar level, and finding new players to come in, see that you know, wow, I can do that, and then you know, take up the challenge of of, try, of going on to wear the the Gibraltar shirt. Um, for for us, it's obviously important to support them and 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 you know, give them as much exposure and much cricket experience and provide the best possible uh, coaching, you know, and, and, and support that we can. We, for us here, we, we have uh, their, their coach when they were, when they were younger, uh, Mark Bakaresa, who obviously works full time now. Um, but you see him popping in the nets every so often. And if they're having nets, you know, you might give them a coaching tape or you see them in the street and, They'll have a chat about it, you know, that people give up a lot of their own personal time as well. Like a current national team coach now, Samir, and, you know, the coaching team that we have there of Samarth and, and whatnot is they give up their, sometimes even their free time to, to have nets with the, the ladies and, and the junior ladies as well and really kind of help bring them on. And, and certainly it's a credit to, they are all a credit to Gibraltar cricket. Um. From a male's perspective, obviously we've been playing cricket a little bit longer. Um, we we played in the first T20I in two thousand and nineteen um, in a tournament against Portugal and Spain up in La Manga, which I was quite fortunate to be, to be a part of um, as a player. And you know, that, that it's for us, it's about having that core, you know, focusing on your core, four, five, six, seven players. But also bringing new people through. Um, Gibraltar is a bit transient sometimes in the sense that you may have uh, the, uh, it's a financial centre, so you have betting companies, um, insurance companies, finance well financial companies, and sometimes they're only here for a period of four or five years, and then they'll move on to you know other places. Um, so obviously, once they qualify for Gibraltar after the three year you know, residency. Um, they may only get to play for two years, so we have to look at bringing people through our own on system, but also looking at if there are any, are there players playing Gibraltar that we don't know are playing yet, or maybe encouraging those who played years ago to come back and play again. So it's 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 only for the, for the in the male perspective, where it's a lot stronger. Um, you know, our current captain is Avinash Pai, who you know it's great it's a great cricketing brain um you know and has improved as a leader over the years as well uh he's but you know he, we were having a chat the other day and he mentioned the fact look i'm, I'm not getting any younger uh, you know my body is is taking its toll um and for him it's now looking at i maybe i step down and then bring another captain in another captain gets brought in but he to remain around the side so they have that that experience to tap into if they needed and and I mean Avi is just 
is, is a supreme watcher of cricket, a great student of cricket from a Gibraltar's perspective. And um, certainly if I'm playing against an opposition, which maybe he's not in, I might ask, you know, Avi, how do I get this bloke out? And and he can, you know, he's very, very good. Are oh, you need looking to aim at this bowl at this length or, or you may look at this fielding position. And the knowledge he passes on to, to other players as well. Um, and I've been for listening to conversations and amongst, you know, and the other players and he passes that on, which I think is a great, is a great trait to have. He's not scared to share his own, to share his views. Um, and everyone can learn from that. We've got senior players like Ian Latine, who's our current vice captain. Um, you know, Ian is, is again, a, a, a very big hitter of the game, L- loves to learn about the game, um, big hitter of the ball, should I say, um, and, you know, can take the game away from an opposition within a couple of overs. Um, and it, especially if you're on the receiving end as a bowler, it's, it's, not, it's not nice to see the ball fly back over your head various times in and over but again he's very involved in fitness and physiotherapy so he'll bring that kind of uh, fitness trait into the team and and it has it has happened over the last certainly year or so where players are getting fitter and you know some of our bigger players are are going away saying hold on i'm really enjoying playing representing my country but to do that i'm now going to have to look at getting fitter losing that that weight um, you know, and, and improving my game as a whole, and so I can stand the best possible chance of getting selected. Um, again, we've got some great, great ta- uh, talent. But Ian, the team was born born in Gibraltar. Avi was actually born in in India and moved to Gibraltar some years ago. So uh, he's obviously has uh, meets the residency clause. But we do have. Um, uh, it's important to have a mix. Well, it's not important to have a mix, but it's important that we we keep cricket as uh, we keep local players involved and and give them the best opportunity. Give well, all players, but you know, be not. I don't want it to get to a point where local cricketers get to a certain point and say, "Hang on a minute, I can't make the national team because I've we have uh, I don't know a uh, a superstar playing in." in your county cricket and I can't get through because that person or there's another 10 like him keep taking my spot. Obviously that'd be great if we could for ranking points, but we, we have to make sure that, you know, there's ways and means of, of those players being able to represent Gibraltar because ultimately that they, they will carry that pride and, and, and that um, thing. Karen Stagno is, is one of our local players and one of kind of, a bit like uh, 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 Kevin Peterson. He's very, very talented striker of the ball, very powerful striker of the ball. And, and you know, he, he's heavily involved in other sports. So for, for us, it's to, you know, please also don't forget, you know, come and play cricket because you are a, a great talent for the game. But how do we build on that talent and, you know, share his, sharing his experiences, giving back and, and, and that's something that we've, We've had a chat with the, the players this year. It's about, you know, coming, get, giving us some coaching feedback and give, giving up a little bit of time to, to come back because, you know, your junior setup sees these players while I'm playing for Gibraltar and I'm, I'm on the TV, whether it be on YouTube or, or stuff like that. And, you know, they enjoy it. Um, you know, my, my, my son's 15 and he he's played in, in under 15s for Gibraltar and, you know, he recently played on an ECN series and as much as I take the mickey out of him for, you know, getting out to a golden duck and I've created a little sticker of it and I send it when he gets a little bit cheeky. But, you know, I, I you know, seeing him play and seeing he, him looking back over his performances and oh, I did well here, I didn't do as well here. It's encouraging to see not just him, but other juniors that are coming through taking that kind of approach. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. It's always great satisfaction, isn't it, when you're a parent and you have your child, your daughter or son play and, you know, representing. It must be a great feeling, I I can imagine, for any parent and for yourself to see that um, and see him enjoy the game and and love the game and have higher ambitions one day of playing for the the national team. Um, So it was good to hear 
you know, the really positive stuff coming out of both teams in terms of the women's and men's. It looks pretty bright and optimistic, the future going forward. Um, in terms of, um, uh, you know, tournaments and series, what are the goals and ambitions for T20 World Cup qualifiers, for example, mainly for the men's side and for the women's side as they play more and more women's T20 nationals and embark on that journey, as they will? Um, are you, uh, you know, realistic and, and say, right, we're, we know our limitations, but we just want to see improvement every time we play in these major tournaments or qualifiers? Certainly, f f from a men's perspective, we you know we've we are kind of like looking for improvement. Our strategic our strategic plan is certainly looking to be in in the fifties in about five years time. You know, in that, in that fifty ranking area, um, I'm challenging the higher teams. Um, from a from a female perspective, because of the you know again Gibraltar having a population of only thirty thousand and a small thing, we don't have the league the, the leagues in place at the more grassroots level to be able to compete at icc now it doesn't mean we can't have a conversation and ask for with the icc and say you know we, we would like to compete at your icc tournaments um otherwise we're just going to have to to play with the our own you know icc games against uh, our own t20i teams against other 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 nations um, and although they'll be recognised as T20Is, they won't necessarily. We won't be. Able, we're still not eligible as a nation to play in 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 the World Cup or European Championship tournaments, um, which I suppose is is you know sad and it's something that we have to work on. As again, part of our plan is to build that base up, and 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 that's something that's not going to happen overnight, certainly. But it's something that we need to continue to work towards. Um, you know, uh, um, what else? Another beneficial thing, and to help grow the sport, is the European Cricket Network. Um, you know, the, we came last year. This seen that women's event here locally really sparked some interest. So it's about you know developing that and harnessing that kind of uh, you know that spark that it created and and pushing forward. So you know. We last last year, some of our junior girls went to a tournament in the UK. Um, you know, they they did they didn't do brilliantly on the results side of things, but from the experience, from the you know the the learning side of things, it was a great thing to come back from because um, they knew this is the standard and and this is what we have to do to improve, and and we you see them commit uh, to that. So again, from the national perspective is about growing the base for the women's building that base have a lot of pool to choose from and from the men's side of things to continue to improve it and the results over the last three years i mean in tw uh, we've gone from maybe one or two wins a year to last year we had uh, six or seven wins out of our uh, 10 10 games so that's a huge improvement and it, it's good to see that the, the money we've invested in coaching and 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 whatnot is is paying off so uh, not only that is for from our perspective seeing the the improvement in the players the a winning team is obviously a lot better than a losing team but you know being able to to see that improvement over the years is good to watch and the team is is moving forward definitely that's really encouraging to hear that and it's good to see that improvement and development happening um, as the uh, more games you play and the, the years progress, which is fantastic. Um, in terms of uh, team culture and that, uh, many associate nations have players that come from different countries that play in associate teams and they all speak different languages and come from different backgrounds and, and cultures. Now, what's the case with uh, Gibraltar cricket? Do you have any other players that come from other countries that play for the team, speak different languages, um, not sure what the the natural, uh, the, uh, the preferred language is in Gibraltar. I think it's English or Spanish or one of the two, yeah. So um, how do you try and accommodate that in terms of team unity and, and making sure everyone's on the same page and everyone understands what everyone's saying on the field, trying to mix all so, those different cultures and backgrounds together? 
our, our first the first language is, is English. Um, you know, obviously we have a dialect called Janito, which is a bit of mix of Spanish, uh, English, and you know the the, the few frame phrases here and there. Um, yeah. But our, our natural language is English, so we will communicate in English and and you know we're very very welcoming society here here in Gibraltar at least in a very community and you know it's certainly that's something that is important certainly to me as, as president in, in cricket as well to you know welcome and, and keep players involved in the game um it may, people have differences of opinion and that, and that's fair enough it doesn't mean I, I don't listen I do I I do not listen to them. So I will listen to them and listen to their opinions and take it on board and and finding, but it's the same thing you try and promote downwards as well, that ability to to listen to your players and look, I've got this idea for this batter or this field, this bowler um, and promote that. Or I've got an idea for this type of event that we want to host and, and do and, and certainly promote that kind of leadership going downwards as well, because it, it takes a lot of pressure off those in the higher positions if you have junior or junior i say junior less experienced or younger or you know even those that are not necessarily in that leadership group or whatever it is that may be called you know getting involved and, and putting an input and giving back which is what's really important for me at least yeah, anyway definitely. yeah definitely absolutely um, yeah, so that, that, that's good to hear, um, that everyone feels welcome and not left out and you feel a part of a team and, and a part of the setup, which is fantastic to, to hear that. In terms of the locals, are the, are the locals rallying behind the teams and support them when, whenever they play and have the opportunity to play in front of their home crowd from time to time? Yeah, I mean, we we get a lot of families and 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 and, fr and friends of the game, not only of the game but of the um, you know the team coming up to watch. Um, I mean, at the moment, we we, we there's always room for improvement. Um, it, it's not like we pack out a stadium, but you'll get a good twenty or thirty fans that are cheering, uh, and and that's what you know can spear a team on during the. And the, the bad, the bad things. Um, I mean, recently uh, we we had a, a team that called the Calpy Giants, or we have a team called the Calpy Giants who played in the European Cricket League up in Cartama in Spain, and it's like the Champions League of Europe, um, you know, the equivalent in football. And you know, we we I was at one of them. You know, we were cheering along, and 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 some of the they afterwards used to have a chat with the players, and like you know, we're, we're really glad you were, you know chant or singing songs or whatever it is it's to, to you know they kind of spears them along it it, it yeah. provides that you know these guys are here to support so let's let's do well let's let's what else can we do so it's it, it certainly is an important part of having the fans here and, and coming along and, and and supporting you know whatever whether it be the women's team the men's team or even you know one of the club teams um you know maybe the juniors coming to watch and 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 whatnot, which which is always good for them. You know, got their favourite coach, so they support him over the other coach, or you know, that a little bit of rivalry between the teams, which is always a good buffer. Yeah, absolutely. No, that's that's fantastic to hear that uh, that people are getting involved and passionate and wanting to cheer on the national teams or their local team domestically and the de domestic leagues over there and their club. Um. Yeah, that's no, that's fantastic. It's really encouraging to hear that, Mark. Um, in terms of the future, are you optimistic and hopeful for the future for both the women's and men's team going forward? What would you like to see both teams do and achieve going into the years ahead? So, for for the women's team is obviously be, being able to qualify for that ICC that ICC tournament, like growing that player base at the at, at the bottoms. You know, having a hundred women more playing cricket here in Gibraltar that, that you know as many as we possibly can and having a, a bustling junior section of people coming through and, and and I guess it's the same thing with with the the men's as well you know improving the rankings getting really getting up there um you know challenging 
the, the higher teams and, and look, results always won't go our way, but certainly from both either perspective of the men's or women's, but, you know, coming away with those wins and, and playing hard, um, you know, it, it's it leave, it, there's something that they're saying, you know, you leave everything on the pitch and you try your best, but if you can't, if, if it's just sometimes the game just doesn't go your way, um, it's one of those, one of those things, but I, I would certainly like the, those playing cricket to, to, you know, bring friends, bring family members who don't play cricket grow, and just watch the sport grow. Ultimately, our aim is, is as a as a as a board, is to be the second most popular sport uh, here in Gibraltar. Because let's, let's face it, we really can't compete with football at the moment. But you know, in an ideal world, then you know, compete with football and and you know, really really improve on on the cricket scene in Gibraltar. Yeah, absolutely. No, it's. It's really encouraging, Mark. It's really encouraging that from what you've told me and what people are listening from this episode, it's that the future and um, the the years ahead are very hopeful and optimistic. Of course, you've got to be hopeful and optimistic. Otherwise, uh, why are you doing this job or all that, you know? Um, so you've got to be positive and have that positive outlook. And definitely you can achieve big things if you believe and work hard. You can achieve anything. So... Um, definitely. I think everyone would agree um, that uh, they want to see Gibraltar do well, uh, women's and men's teams, and, and progress through the ranks and, the, you know, improve their ranking and, uh, you know, be the best cricket teams they can possibly be, uh, be, but also be good people as well. Not only just good cricketers, but good people as well, which is important because cricket teaches you many life skills, as we know, Mark. Obviously, you and me being involved in the game for many years, you know, you have a lot of life lessons that get thrown at you in cricket. Resilience, mental toughness, not giving yeah. up, perseverance and all that stuff. So it's about creating good people as well and as well as good cricket teams and performance. And um, it's really encouraging. So I think everyone would say, Mark, and, and even me and many of our listeners would say, we wish you all the best for the future and what's to come in terms of the teams, women's and men's. And we... We'll be watching closely and beware the the rock of Gibraltar <laughs> coming coming through, and uh, you know doing what they can do to uh, to beat teams around the world and and be the best cricket teams they can possibly be. So we'll be watching with close interest, that's for sure. Got to get my uh, Gibraltar hat on and and flag wave it around, Mark, and I'll be a keen watcher from from now on in. See how the team's going. So now I, I think it's um, gonna. I think it's going to be uh, pretty exciting to see what they can do in the years to come. And that's what you want from all associate nations is that uh, being able to improve and get better as as the years progress and as the more cricket series and games they play or tournaments, the more better they will be. So, yeah, um, definitely you should be proud of, of what the work that you've put in with the rest of the uh, association as well over there. Uh, should be very proud of your efforts, that's for sure. So we'll be watching with close interest as the years progress, Mark, um, on Gibraltar cricket and the national teams. But thank you for sharing those insights uh, with us. And, and no doubt a lot of people will learn more about the women's and men's team and want to watch them and, and see how they go in the future. Um, Mark, uh, let's talk about the growth and development of cricket within Gibraltar. In terms of getting cricket into local communities, clubs, schools, grassroots, etc. And um, Mark, this is one of the challenges that many associate nations have is how they introduce cricket and promote it. That's easier said than done in a, in a country that's not familiar with cricket. Um, and being the president, of course, you must sit back in your chair, scratch your head, ask yourself these questions. You know, how do we introduce cricket into the community? How do we establish grassroots cricket? At local cricket clubs in local communities, competitions, pathway systems, underage comps uh, to, you know, get that talent out there and, and progress to the next level, which is the national setup. Uh, having facilities, as you mentioned, you know, Gibraltar being a small country um, in terms of land mass, uh, it's very hard to have facilities like nets, grounds available for people to access in their areas um, and to play cricket in. That's often a, a big challenge for associate countries. And making cricket accessible to everyone. 
So making it accessible to everyone, whether it be in their local communities or TV or, you know, being able to, you know, go and play for their local club, making it accessible, easy for people to access everything. And also getting cricket into school programs, which is often a, a big area for a lot of associate nations is that they target the the schools and um, get get cricket into the sporting programs there because that's where you, that's where you um, need to to start them off really at that age really if they are going to be involved in the game. Uh, so, Mark, what challenges does the Gibraltar Cricket Association have in trying to grow and develop cricket in the Gibraltar community? And do you see cricket becoming a mainstream sport in Gibraltar anytime soon? So, your thoughts on on those points so we are we are already in the school kind of programming so we've we've had and we have been for an, a number number of years now it's one thing that's has been very important not just to myself but to my predecessors before me um we have we have a youth development officer who, who goes in and coaches and, and and whatnot so those those type of things will bring interest into the sport um we have lunchtime clubs within those schools as well. So again, those who are a little bit more interested. And over the last, let's say, year or so, certainly in, in conjunction with the Department of Education, um, we, we kind of have an inter-school, you know, tournaments, which it's, it's going to actually take off, start in, in after, e after the Easter break here. So for us, that's, you know, it's hugely important. It, um, it allows you know, a little bit of competition, a little bit of rivalry, but also promoting the game. And and even you, I've walked past and I've seen one of the senior schools play a, a, a rival against another school. And you you know, obviously, Gibraltar being a sport community, you know, majority of who they are, if who who the certain who kids are and whatnot. And you see their parents and go, listen, uh, you know, your son or daughter, I saw them absolutely smoke it in in a in a game the other day. Why don't you get them along? You know. Get, let's uh, yeah. get them involved. Um, obviously, that we are a small, small nation, but incredibly a sporty one. We we have so many sports, and 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 for us, for the small area that we are, um, we have to share our pitch. And and you know, with rugby, with and, and now football, whilst there's modifications to the football stadium, but we always have to you know try our best and and make with what we can. So it's hugely important that we we keep the junior level thing going um but also look at ways to get cricket into the community where it may be holding a fun day uh, uh you know it, it, within the stadium or maybe going to the beach in the summer and and you know playing a little mini tournament in one of the down at the beach or looking at you know, how can we get people to come up to us? Do we tag on another event that's being held or do we promote an event? It's again, yeah, it's a lot of head scratching, but I've got a, a really, really, really good board. You know, they, all of every single one of us, you know, wants Gibraltar cricket to do well, which is the main thing, but it's not just the board as well. There are a lot of senior players, a senior people involved in cricket here in Gibraltar. And, and let's face it, we all have one goal, which is to, you know, to improve Gibraltar cricket. So I certainly don't share the monopoly on all the ideas, but it's about being able to sit down with, with people and say, look, we've got this idea. OK, what do you need from us to support it? Can we support it? You know, what do you need and and how can we make this the best possible? What do, what do we get? Not what do, what do we get out of it, but how can we help you maximise Gibraltar cricket's uh, uh you know wake shall we say uh, you know the, the vision how can we help you help us so uh, there's lots of different things you know we've we've had fundraisers and stuff like that we've held school events um you know something that we're planning is just to increase women in women's game is having a non cricketers cricket session you know with maybe football teams or as part of team building uh, hockey teams you know inviting you know even work uh, team building days um you know and I, I hosted we hosted one for the police here locally a, a few years ago and and the feedback from from some of the, the women in the police were 
I really enjoyed that. I didn't think cricket was was like that. Um, you know, I've always thought it was boring. And you, you get people involved and, and they kind of, you know, they have a different opinion once they once they actually start playing and and it's about just harnessing that and, and trying to you know i've said it and I, I say it to my board and to the players if i even get one person from an event of 50 people well you know what that it's been worth it because i get one extra player playing cricket that means one extra person who is playing the game and, and enjoying the game which is which is hugely important absolutely it is yeah that's Definitely it makes it makes it worthwhile after that if you see see that happen. You know, only a handful of people, maybe one or two, decide to take cricket up. Uh, then it's worth it doing these programs and the the blood, sweat, and tears gone into it. Um, it's paid off. Um, yeah. um, in terms, I asked this question to everyone, Mark, uh, Mark, that I've interviewed in this associate cricket series on the podcast. And they, they give me different answers. And um, it's about the ICC in terms of their support for associate nations. Do you feel like that you have a good relationship with the ICC as a whole, as an associate country in Gibraltar, uh, and also with the regional body of ICC Europe as well? So from an from ICC, ICC perspective, um, uh, yeah, we, we deal with ICC Europe mainly. Which are based in 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 you know in the UK. Um, I always know there's a, if there's a huge problem, they're a phone call away. Um, you know, and when it's they're pretty. And to be fair, that the, the people that we deal with are really really decent, really helpful. You know, we understand that there's there's rules and regulations, and we're not always going to agree. But we it's a, for, for certainly from my perspective is finding a way forwards, whether you know or or if not. You know, saying, "Look, what can we do? To, you know, to to make things better." Certainly for us, they they are very helpful. Um, you know, want they want Gibraltar cricket to do well because if that they that helps, then more people playing cricket, and so you can you, you for us, they're, they're certainly there's no issue with us there, with them. Uh, I know European wise, we do get along with our member nations, with with other with other associations, federations. Um, it's just sometimes the the politics behind yeah. the politicians behind the sports, which may not help. Traditionally, you know, we have quite a a decent relationship with cricket España, um, you know, and and like us, they just want more people to play cricket and they want everyone to be involved. Um, however, politically, you know, the politicians behind it may not have the same ambition that is out of my control and you know but it's it's important for us to to foster good relations with the rest of our associations and and you know work towards more people playing cricket more cricket and you know more 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 games against one another or, or a little bit of harmony against with, with each other you know what can we do can, can, you know can, do we help you out as an example for, for certainly for Gibraltar cricket, we hosted a uh, a, a coaching tutor course, a, a level one a few years ago. And we had people from cricket Portugal, uh, an individual from cricket Portugal, uh, an individual from cricket España, people from cricket Italy. You know, if if they were to call up and say, "Hey, look, I need a I need a master uh, a master tutor for or a tutor sorry to be able to run a level one course." it's next week it's in three weekends you know uh can you help us out or well, if we can then yeah sure that let's let's help each other out because ultimately we're all in the same boat we all just want cricket to do well absolutely yeah definitely and that's what cricket's all about it's about helping each other out and maybe world cricket has sort of lost that in the re in recent times uh, about helping each other out for the common good which is to just help the game grow and develop, really. And um, it, you see that with associate countries, they're always willing to help each other out and organise series or play against each other. Obviously, it's a bit different because, you know, you want to try and play against teams that are ranked lower than you because of the ranking systems and that, are, that are in place. You know, if you finish higher, you get more funding and, and that as well. Do you think that needs to change as well, Mark, the... The way it's structured in terms of the rankings and the funding model when it comes to that side of things with associate cricket 
the, the thing is at the end of the day it's the, the the funding model is it's a difficult thing to replace because what do you replace it with and that's something that will need to be serious conversation and obviously you, the big the big 10 or 20 cricketing nations will want a share of their fair share of the pie the the, the pie and and sometimes you know we, we need to look at do through sponsorship and stuff like that how do we kind of do, do we look to emulate what they do or do we kind of have to tinker it to figure out our own little associate way of of going forward um obviously money helps um you know us be able to pay coaches be able to pay for equipment and, and whatnot and and since certainly since i've been dealing with the with the icc and, and whatnot we've always We've never really had much of an issue in that. We have to make a budget, um, and we we try our best to, you know, to stick to those budgets and constraints that we have. But obviously, yeah. like, if we were to, to receive a significant amount, then you know, purchase our own ground maybe, or, put, uh, or which would again allow us to play more cricket. But we have to just wait and see. Yeah, 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 definitely. Um... You can always improve things, I suppose, and the ICC can always get better itself in terms of how can it better help associate countries or the game of cricket in in general. So they can always reflect and, and do that. Uh, so it was, it was good to hear your thoughts on that because, you know, the ICC has been talked about a lot in re- recent times of how they're running, running the game and all that stuff. So it was good to hear your perspectives on that and... and um, Many people I've interviewed in the series have said, yeah, the regional bodies are, are very good and very helpful in terms of supporting us and, and that. Um, in terms of volunteers, in terms of umpires and scorers and coaches, which are limited because of funding, as we've just talked about, um, how's that like in Gibraltar in terms of the volunteer base, people volunteering for these certain roles? I'd say it's like every other country and we struggle for, for volunteers. Um, something that we, so as part of our, certainly in the, in the, in the men's arena, um, as part of our develop, we have a development squad, which is your 25 plus that are looking to make the national team. And as part of the conditions for, for that, what we've set is, is a, you know, you have to give 10 hours a year to coaching. It's a very small amount. You look at hopefully you know the little, oh I actually like coaching or I like being involved, you know it's not just coaching, you know maybe giving back as an umpire, giving back as you know coming up and and you know maybe setting up the pitch it, that 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 kind of thing, um, but also we look to you know parents in coaching sessions, you know getting the parents involved and all of a sudden, oh hold on a minute I quite enjoy coming up and getting involved and helping out. And, Maybe I'm going to learn to be a coach. So, you know, we do struggle. We we do struggle for volunteers, um, and there's no turning away that. But it's obviously the onus is on us as an association to to look at ways, um, you know, to improve the, not just the the coaching but umpiring and and whatnot, and and how do we make it, uh, you know attractive for those people to to take up the role whether it be an umpire coach or or whatever it may be assistant in some way yeah that's often the challenge isn't it to try and make it uh uh, attractive really um and you know try and get people in these roles which is often the hardest thing to do but in terms of um coaching clinics and, and and scoring courses and umpiring courses the icc have been very helpful for you as Gibraltar Cricket in terms of providing those uh, necessary resources? So we, we've, we're quite blessed, should I say, in the sense that we have people capable of doing the job. Um, you know, we have, uh, as a, as a, so we're able now to teach our own level one coaches, which is something that only happened in the last, you know, few years. So we don't re- need to rely on outside I uh, think we can even host courses for other associate nations. Um, the same with 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 umpiring going forward. We recently sent a couple of umpires to become educators, 
um, at a course in in Croatia. So it's looking to be able to not only to build our own sustain, you know, to be able to sustain ourselves, but how do we offer that going forward? You know, to and it's something that we we need to grow and need to look and need to obviously keep investing and and not only just not it's not just about money but investing time and resources and and, and looking at you know how, again umpires take a lot of stick from players you know sometimes to discipline wise do we need to come down on that or do we need to educate um you know let's, let's face it if you're coming in voluntarily to get to be given uh i wouldn't say abuse but you're given stick from a from a player or as a coach you come down and, and uh, as a parent you know I, i'm a coach myself and and i've i'm not one to you know turn around and say to a parent look you need to calm down uh, it is a game we're giving you know you may think your son or daughter bats is the best position at three four or five and if we bat at seven well the decision we've taken and you just have to accept that we're trying things out and you know it's up for us at the end of the day and we need to uh to do the, what what we think is best at the time and yeah people can agree or disagree but we can have a chat about it afterwards yeah yeah definitely I, yeah it's a, it, as you said it's a game at the end of the day and <laughs> that's all it is um we're just trying to make the game better for everyone and try to you know try different things see if they work if they don't work well, then we'll try something else and keep on that in continuous improvement cycle of just getting better and and improving as a as a organization but also doing these various things to get people involved in the game grassroots level and and volunteer which is the main thing um i you know um in terms of the future are you very uh, optimistic about uh, the future of the growth and the development of the game in Gibraltar. Are you are you really optimistic that you know the programs that we put in place, the structures are going to be sustainable and going to encourage kids and people of all ages to participate in the game in the best possible way they can. I certainly hope so. It's I mean that's what it's it's about, you know. So if we have to go away and you know revisit something an idea and you know if something has worked for the last five years and all of a sudden had stopped working well, well why is that stop working or you know what we we there's an idea here we're, we're quite close to it works or it doesn't work well you know we need to go away and, and and revisit that and what suits us at the time that we are currently thinking and i know you know with a, such a uh, a limited cricketing pool that we have at the moment you know do we include women in, in the men's games or you know to have that co co-gender game we can have it as a bit of a laugh and a, a joke and a fun you know and, and, and that for that enjoyment of the game um you know your friendlies here and there but when it comes to the leagues do we include them or not and it's it's a conversation and about what suits us and if it doesn't work then you know what we'll revert back to to what at least was better the last time you know we're all look, always looking for ways to improve so let's let's just we have to take it as we as we can and and look at and analyze going forward yeah definitely absolutely uh but just hearing you speak about these programs and structures in place and um some some good work's gone into it and some thought which is uh, which is good as well and planning and uh, hopefully these uh, uh, structures and programs, as you mentioned, put in place can, can definitely help that growth and development side of the game in Gibraltar. Um, but as I said earlier, uh, associate countries always had the, uh, have these challenges of trying to grow and develop a sport in a country that's not familiar with it. So that's often the hardest thing to, because you don't have a foundation to work off, like let's just say Australia or England, for example, where the game's well established in in these countries, but uh, for an associate nation, you have to start start from scratch and work your way up, so to speak, um, and try and navigate these challenges. So uh, it was really interesting hearing your thoughts on, on that, and uh, I think uh, really encouraging signs going forward. And let's hope 
that uh, the game gets stronger and continues to grow and develop in Gibraltar. And hopefully people can enter this great game of cricket and enjoy it. As we've said throughout our chat, it's all about enjoying the game and having fun and just being a part of something that changes people's lives. It does. Cricket does change people's lives. And you hear stories of, of that in many associate countries that it does change people's lives and, um, you know, being a part of this great game gives them an opportunity to, you know, play cricket, represent their country or volunteer, or give something back and, and feel like they're contributing to something. So um, really encouraging signs there, Mark, and, and hopefully we can see that progress uh, throughout the years to come in Gibraltar and, and, and no doubt the game will benefit from that. So thank you for sharing that with us. Um, Mark, um, we've reached our last topic of this discussion. I've enjoyed it in, uh, immensely. I've learned so much and I'm sure you've enjoyed it as well, chatting to me about Gibraltar cricket and um, all the good work you're doing there. Um, so I, I thought to end on, Mark, we talk about what the future holds for cricket in Gibraltar. Now, the future is very uncertain, as we know. It's very hard to predict uh, but if you had to look into the crystal ball and predict the outlook and future, um, Mark, uh, how do you see Gibraltar cricket and associate cricket going to going into the future? So your your thoughts on that to end on? Uh, well, associate cricket certainly seems to be on the up and up. Um, you know, more more people are getting involved, which is which is great to see, and and nations that were not as as highly ranked as what they are now, are, are increasing, are moving up the rankings, which is, from a cricketing perspective, is good to see. Not necessarily from a Gibraltar perspective, because we'd like to be higher up in the rankings, but you know, for for, for us here locally and, and looking based, the the future is is you know we need to keep working hard, we need to keep uh, you know promoting jib cricket and promoting cricket in general. Um, you know, being open to to discussion and being open to maybe different ideas and and be open to learning and and supporting you know our players, uh, you know volunteers, whoever it may be, and and just kind of like looking at how do we make to cricket better. I certainly hope for a a better future, you know, and a more improved, and that's my goal. So that when you know I decide to hang up my presidency i can say you know what this is these are my these are our achievements uh during this time because it's not about me it's about the, the association and about the players and the and, and the people so these are our achievements and at least i can go you know i've left i've left gibraltar cricket in a better state than than when it was when i came in and, and we've improved in this area and, and and that's what it is it's it's just looking at, and I have a really decent, really, really good team behind, uh, you know, with me. So I can't, I, I can see us, you know, achieving some of the goals that we set out uh, to make. So um, I'm pretty hopeful. Yeah, definitely. You know, well, well you got to be hopeful, I suppose, about the future and optimistic as we've talked about. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it was good to hear your thoughts on that. And uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, what you've told me in this chat and what people have listened to you in this chat, our listeners and that, I think the future is bright and hopeful. And and hopefully uh, the goals that you've set out as an organisation are achieved and ticked off and both the women's and the men's team do well and the growth and development of the game does Gibraltar and uh, people get involved in this great game. So definitely the future is, is bright, that's for sure. Um, and, and thanks for sharing those predictions there, Mark for us. Um, well, Mark, thank you for joining me for this uh, Associate Cricket Series episode to discuss all things Gibraltar cricket. I've enjoyed it immensely and I've learned loads from listening to you today speak about uh, Gibraltar cricket. Anything I can do uh, from the podcast point of view to promote Associate cricket uh, and, and get your story out there and get everyone accustomed to a Gibraltar cricket. I, I think I've done my job. So I've certainly done that in this interview today. Uh, but yeah, it's all about that giving back, isn't it? And, and that's why I do the series on the podcast to, to let everyone know that there's more 
to cricket than the full member countries. There's these mm-hmm. associate countries, people like yourself, Mark, passionate people behind the scenes doing some great work. And we, we can't let their stories go untold. They have to be told. So, so thank you for sharing your story and all things Gibraltar cricket with me today. I've really enjoyed it. And I'm sure our listeners listening as well have enjoyed it immensely, just as much as I have. Um, Mark, if people want to get in touch with you personally or the association in Gibraltar, if they want to learn more about cricket in Gibraltar, where can people do that? So our social media pages are possibly the, the best place places to get a hold of us. Um, you know, or, or through one of the one of those either your Facebook, Instagram, and and they'll be able to get a hold of us from there. You know, from that email addresses and, and whatnot can be given out. So, you know, that, that that's the best way to, to reach out to us. We're usually pretty, um, so I would say, are active on online. Um, you know, when it comes to receiving messages and whatnot. So that certainly would be the best place. Yeah, definitely. Um, we'll leave links to those in the um, description of this episode for people to check out if they want to get in touch um, in terms of um, Gibraltar or Gibraltar cricket, I should say, in terms of being interested in joining a club or being a part of the cricket setup over there. So uh, as I said, we'll leave links to those in the description of this episode for people to check it out and, and see what's happening over there in Gibraltar when it comes to cricket. Uh, Before we go, remember to like, share, comment, subscribe and click the bell to make sure you get the latest episodes of the podcast. Be sure to like and share our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter and on Instagram. Most of the podcast is available on Anchor, Spotify and on Apple Podcasts. Once again, thank you, Mark, for joining me today to discuss all things Gibraltar cricket. I hope all of you watching or listening to this Associate Cricket Series episode learned a lot about cricket in Gibraltar from Mark. Until next time, keep safe and bye for now.